Basketball season continues to move forward in the Bull City, not only for the men's program, but Kara Lawson and the women's basketball team off and running 10 games into their season. How are things going? Let's talk about that on today's episode of Locked On Blue Devils. Hi, everybody. Dick Vitale. Hey, make sure you listen, man, to Locked On Blue Devils with J.J. Jackson. He's awesome, baby. You are Locked On Blue Devils. Your daily podcast on the Duke Blue Devils, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, everybody, and welcome into another episode of the Locked On Blue Devils podcast. My name is JJ Jackson, and it's so great to have you here with us. On this Saturday, excited to talk about everything going on in the life of Duke Athletics. Locked on Blue Devils, of course, is your one-stop shop for everything going on inside Duke Athletics. From football to men's and women's basketball, baseball, softball, we cover it all. We like to talk about everything going on there in Durham. On today's show, we'll talk a little bit more about the women's basketball program with our good friend Chris Edwards. Long overdue to bring him back on the show with us. So excited to have him here. If you have not done so already, please be sure to follow and subscribe to Lockdown Blue Devils for free, wherever it is that you get your podcast. Leave us a five-star rating and written review. Also, if you don't mind, take a moment, subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this video, share it with your friends. Just appreciate all the support that we've got over there. So without further ado, let's bring them in. It's been quite some time, but Chris Edwards is back here with us, the play-by-play radio voice for Duke women's basketball. Chris, great to see you, man. How are you? JJ, always good to be with you. Appreciate you asking me to come back. All right, 10 games into the season with for the Stuke women's basketball team. You're no stranger to this program, no stranger to head coach Kara Lawson. What's it been like for you personally, Chris, to get back going with another season? Yeah, it's been great. You know, it's kind of long overdue. It was a long summer, a long fall, but great to be back with, with Coach Lawson and the Blue Devils. And, Man, it's just an awesome program. Great group to be around. Really fun group. Uh, you can tell how much chemistry there is between the players. They, they just seem to really enjoy being around one another. Coach has talked about that kind of at numerous times with me at her first radio show a couple of weeks ago. You can just see the cohesive nature of this program, and I'm excited to see this team continue to grow and build as we get into the winter and into ACC play. And there have already been a lot of fun matchups for the Stoop team. A trip out to Stanford. They play South Carolina, one of the top teams in the land. Uh, absolutely epic NCAA tournament last season on the women's side of things. Everyone was talking about Caitlin Clark and what she was able to do. LSU and Angel Reese, of course, have that magical run to a title. A lot of momentum in the women's game. Has it felt like at the early portion of this season that there's been a little bit more excitement as you go to some of these venues? Yeah, I think so, JJ. I think this is kind of a renaissance, if you will, for for women's basketball. I I think, you know, the the game has so many superstars, right? Mm -hmm. And the league, the ACC, has superstars too. You think about all the players that have come back, and some of that is the current landscape that we live in, right, with NIL and the portal and all of those other ancillary things that go on off the court. But I I think right now, JJ, there's a – trying to think of the right word, there's a focus, if you will, on women's basketball. People come to the games. I mean, there are star quality. People are showing up to see it because it's really good basketball. And taking nothing away from from what the the game has been in the past, but right now this is maybe as popular as the game has ever been. And you mentioned, you know, Caitlin Clark and Angel Reese, and you look in the ACC and Elizabeth Kitley at Virginia Tech, Georgia Amor at Virginia Tech. I mean, the list goes on and on and on. And it seems like everybody is good. Everybody is old. Everybody has a superstar player that can take over the game. So it's been a lot of fun on a night in, night out basis. And look at the 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 league, the ACC. Look at the Division One ranks as a whole so far in the non conference portion of the season. Look at all the upsets already. I mean, I, I can't remember a time in my almost decade of doing this with Duke women's basketball or you've seen this many upsets this yeah. early into the season, you know, a lot of times it felt like it was just chalk, right? Like if you're ranked in the top 15, top 20, probably going to win the game. That's not necessarily true anymore. And I think a lot of that is the portal. A lot of that is uh, NIL. A lot of that's still the COVID year hanging around. Like these players have another extra year of eligibility. And, and I think that the game has just gotten better and you're seeing more parity and more discrepancy of talent across the entire nation. Excited to talk a little bit about the results that we've seen so far for the Stoop team on the court in itself, but let's talk more about kind of that offseason. So 
a fun tournament run uh, for the sport. Duke gets ready for an upcoming season. We talked a lot about the men's program and what the offseason looked like. With over 300 Division I teams in the country, the men's team was one of only two that did not have a single player enter into the transfer portal, and no one new showed up on campus outside of those incoming freshmen. What did it look like for Kara Lawson and her coaching staff this season as they're looking to put together this year's roster? Yeah, a little different. I mean, there were some players that came in through the portal that left because, into the portal. I mean, th th that's just kind of the nature of the beast, right? And I, I think it's more the status quo, right? I mean, you talk about the men's team being one of two programs. That's an outlier. <laughs> yeah, definitely the outlier, right? I think it's more the norm to have a player or two in the portal. Duke did that. Duke, I recruited from the portal a little bit too, but they also got some talented uh, freshmen, some true freshmen coming on campus. You know, it's another really strong recruiting class, top five class nationally for Duke. I mean, it's the first time Duke's had a, a recruiting class like that in almost a decade. And the future continues to look bright from a recruiting standpoint with some of the signees that Carol Lawson and her staff have brought in. But you look at this team, there's a lot of freshmen, that four freshmen, as a matter of fact, that are contributing to this team. They call themselves the Fantastic Four. Uh, they bring energy every single day, and they're making an impact, too. You think of Aluchi Okanawa. Aluchi has been phenomenal. She plays with so much heart, so much grit. I mean, she's a six foot, give or take, and one of the best rebounders in the ACC. She just goes and gets in on every single possession. She comes in there. She plays with a high motor. Jaden Donovan's been in the starting lineup for Duke. She's also impacted the game in a lot of ways. And you think about Delaney Thomas, who's come in too and made a really big impact for the Blue Devils, especially in that game against Stanford, a couple other non-conference games where she really started to turn it on, a double-double already for her this year. Uh, Lucci with already a, a – couple double doubles to her credit as well so this is a freshman class that that's kind of learning on the fly it is a younger team for the blue devils not not a ton of upperclassmen on this team there are a couple mostly in the post but this is a young team i looked out there the other day and all five players on the court for duke were either a freshman or a sophomore right and so yeah. in this world of college basketball where it feels like everybody's old this is a duke team that i feel like is going to continue to get better as the season goes along and i think this is a team that's going to start peaking toward the the heart of the acc season playing their best basketball into march into the postseason so you just mentioned three players in particular there between Okamawa, Donovan, and Thomas. And again, I hate to keep kind of comparing things to the men's basketball program, but just in the spirit of Duke and looking at how uh, you look at this, face of the franchise is not something that we really throw around at the college level. It's more something you see in the professional game. But with this men's team going into the season, you've got the All-American buzz for Filipowski and Proctor, and then you've got your captain, Jeremy Roach, back for yet another season. The three players you've already mentioned, are those the leaders of this team? Like who would you kind of pinpoint for fans if you're not a Duke person associated in the women's basketball game? Who are those players that the sport's talking about for the Blue Devils? Yeah, I think there are a lot of players, JJ. And I think okay. it's on a night in, night out basis too. But I, I think the players that Coach Lawson pointed to kind of at the start of the season that maybe we're going to take that big jump from a leadership, from a scoring standpoint, I think Ashlyn Jackson – comes to mind first. I mean, Ashlyn, uh, she went off at Stanford. I think she had 25 points in that game, hit five or six three-pointers. I think she's one of the two that, that's really growing into that leadership role. I think Reagan Richardson is the other. This is Reagan's second year in the program, third year. Uh, she transferred from Georgia. So this is – she's been with Coach Lawson now for a couple of years. So she started to kind of figure it out. And Coach Lawson has said this before. Like last year, Duke didn't necessarily need Reagan to score. They didn't really need Ashland, who came off the bench a lot, to score, to win games. This year, Duke needs Richardson and Jackson and others to score to win games, right? Uh, and I think you're starting to see some of that depth being cultivated. And this is a 10-person roster. Blue Devils are using almost everybody they've got available to them right now. Uh, so the depth is starting to come around. I, but again, it's a night in, night out basis, too. I think T. Mayer has really established herself the first year transfer from Boston College. She was a member of the ACC all freshman team a season ago. I think you're seeing her continue to develop into her leadership role, running the show from a point guard perspective. Uh, she's top 10 in the ACC in minutes per game going into the exam break. She leads one of the leaders in the ACC and assists per game, assist to turnover ratio and steals. So you're seeing a lot of different combinations. And I think Coach Lawson may be still tinkering with some of those combinations too, which is what the non-conference portion of your schedule is for, to, a chance to grow, a chance to see a lot of different styles, a chance to play some different combinations and see what, what combinations, which players mesh well.
well with each other. And maybe we'll see something like that uh, in the ACC season. All right, so six and four start to the year. Let's talk a little bit more about those on-court results, and we'll do that after we take our first time out here on today's episode of Locked on Blue Devils. All right, Locked on Blue Devils here today is brought to you by our friends over at Prize Picks. Prize Picks, of course, is America's largest daily fantasy sports platform that's out there. It's just you against the numbers. Instead of battling thousands of other players, including pros and sharks, you pick more than or less than on two to six player stat projections, and watch those winnings start to roll in. Prize Picks has the basketball season here covered as well, and you could pick combo projections across football and basketball in the specials league. We've got a full slate of NFL this weekend, games on both Saturday and Sunday, and you can see all the best props there available at Prize Picks. You've got this league, the specials league, combining players. For example, LeBron James plus Travis Kelsey at a 10.5 combo of three-point shots made and receptions for Kelsey. It's a whole lot of fun. Make sure you go check it all out at Prize Picks as they even offer that amazing reboot policy so the entries stay in play even if one of your players gets injured. If they exit the game in the first half and do not return in the second, that player is rebooted as Prize Picks is the only daily fantasy sports platform with an injury insurance policy. So right now, go to prizepicks.com slash locked on college and use code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Again, prizepicks.com slash locked on college using code locked on college for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks is daily fantasy sports made easy. All right, Duke women's basketball, our conversation today alongside the radio voice of the program and Chris Edwards. We're talking about the 6-4 and four start to the season for the Blue Devils. I've already mentioned a couple of games on the schedule already in Stanford and South Carolina, both really fun games to watch, although they didn't necessarily go in the Blue Devils' favor at the end. You mentioned Ashlyn Jackson, and there's a level of bias to me considering the love of the last name there. Sure. The play, yeah, yeah. But, I mean, the shots she was making from the outside in that game, unbelievable. And on a big stage like that, we also saw great performances in that game with South Carolina, one of the top teams in the land. You look at the final score, it doesn't tell the full story of the game that Duke played against the Gamecocks before kind of a late run. I want to kind of start with those bigger matchups that Duke's had this season. Yeah, and and I think this is kind of the underlying theme of this team right now through the first month and a half of the season. Uh, it's a young team. We've established that, right? This This is a team, and Coach Lawson has said this, this is a team that's shown they can compete in that arena, in that environment, on the big stage. Down 17 points against Stanford, came back, uh, forced overtime, had a shot to win it at the end of regulation, had a couple chances there in overtime, just couldn't close it out. South Carolina, kind of the same thing. Duke trailed by 13, 15 points, came back, tied the game early in the fourth quarter. South Carolina made that late run that you alluded to in a game that was a lot closer than that 15, 16 point final margin, whatever it was. We've seen some flashes, though. I mean, think about Georgia. Duke was down four points late in that game at Georgia in the ACC-SEC Challenge. Had a shot to win it at the buzzer. Didn't go in. Went to overtime. Learned some lessons from that Stanford game. Won in overtime over a quality Georgia team. Then you look at the game at Clemson. You know, and sometimes you have a clunker, right? You're not going to go through the entire season without having a clunker. Unfortunately, the Blue Devils had a clunker against Clemson, you know, and Clemson made, I think, 11, 13, three-pointers, something like that. They shot over 60% from beyond the arc. Coach, you know, was disappointed in the effort, and she said as much. But then Duke comes back last Sunday against a really good Florida Gulf Coast team, a team that at that point, one of the top five teams in the country in terms of three-pointers per game attempted. They were averaging about 31 threes a game. Uh, they set the NCAA record a couple years ago for most threes made in a season. Wow. Last year, J.J., they made over 400 three-pointers as a team. On their roster, they don't list guards and forwards. No, everybody is listed as the S position. You know what that is? I didn't know what this was. Shooter would be the shooter. Guess. Shooter, shoot, wow. baby. Shooter, shoot. So everybody can shoot. Anyway, Duke corrected that from the Clemson game, and they held Florida Gulf Coast to, I think, like 5 of 12 from three, something like that in that game. So you see the adjustments that Duke has been that has made. That's going to be a quality win over a team that's picked to win the Atlantic Sun. Last year, they won a game in the NCAA tournament too. So you, you couple all this together. 
It's a team that's still learning how to win in these environments. And these experiences are going to be good for this Duke team. We talked about South Carolina. We talked about Stanford. Talked about Georgia. Oh, by the way, they played the U.S. women's national team, too, and their run-up to get ready for the Paris Olympics coming up in a couple of years. These are all really good experiences. Columbia on the road, a team that's one of the top two teams uh, in the Ivy League this year that could be a factor when it comes to March. And then you start to look at what's left on Duke's non-conference schedule. Toledo coming up next week, a Toledo team that just beat Michigan a couple of weeks ago. They're one of the favorites every year in the MAC. So I think when you look at up at the end of the year, this is going to be a Duke team that's played a top five, top ten strength of schedule nationally, especially when you couple that in with the ACC portion of things, J.J. I think this is going to be a team, as I said earlier, that gets better as the year goes along. I think it's going to be a team that's a lot better offensively than maybe they were at times a season ago. You know, that team was so good defensively, one of the best defensive teams in the country. Really hard to replicate that this year but with such a young group, but they're still growing defensively. I'm not going to sit here and tell you that they're going to sacrifice defense for offense because sure. I think Coach Lawson's always going to be built around defense and Duke's still putting layers, and it's like an onion, right? You have to layer the onion. So Duke's still doing that. I think, as I've said a couple times, you look up at the end of the year, they're going to play their best basketball in the month of, of January, February, March, and you're going to see this team hopefully in the postseason when we look up at the end of the year. Just two non-conference games left, as you just pointed out, against Coppin State and Toledo. Toledo, the first of those, uh, Wednesday, December 20th, same day that Duke is playing Baylor at Madison Square Garden. So hoping for a couple of Blue Devil victories on that one there. But then it's ACC play. You're jumping back into it. As you mentioned, we already had the uh, the Clemson contest for the Blue Devils in the weird league start that we've had this last few seasons. One game as a taste, and then you got a couple of uh, non-conference games to close it out as you go through the holidays. What about this first stretch of ACC games for Duke? Is this important to kind of set the tone for what the league would be? Do the matchups set up well for the Blue Devils to start the year? Yeah, I think every league game is important, right? I mean, you only get 18 chances in the league sure. to, to go out and, and compete on a night-in, night-out basis. So I think they're all important. I mean, opening up against Boston College, I say opening up, you, you continue ACC play against Boston College at home. That's a New Year's Eve day game, 2 o'clock on New Year's Eve uh, at Cameron. And then to Louisville for the first game after uh, the, the New Year break, you kind of get into that – Thursday, Sunday routine. I, I think every game in the league is important. And and I think just kind of looking at the league through the non-conference portion of the schedule, everybody in the league is capable of winning on a night in, night out basis. Uh, my sense right now, and this is, you know, we talk here on what, December 16th or something like that. So take this with a grain of salt. I, I think there's probably between eight and 10 teams in the ACC that are capable of making the NCAA tournament out of a 15 team league. I mean, I think that's pretty good. There are some teams at the bottom of the ACC that have struggled in the non-conference portion of the schedule. Uh, but I, that doesn't mean that they're not going to be capable of winning ACC games because I think they are. Uh, I mean, look at Clemson the other night. I mean, they shot lights out. They're an older team. Amari Robinson, they've got a great uh, sophomore. And Ruby Whitehorn, too, who's one of the highest rated players to ever come into Clemson. Everybody is good. So, yeah, I think every game is important for this team. And I think that was a valuable and a hard lesson to learn at Clemson was that you've got to bring your A game every single night. It doesn't matter what the record of the team on the other side of the ledger is. You've got to bring it every night because winning in any sport, but particularly in women's basketball right now, is supremely difficult. No doubt about that. We'll see how Duke can do over these next few and open up the ACC schedule. I'm sure we'll have many visits throughout the rest of the season, Chris, which I'm certainly looking forward to. So we got to take one more break and then we'll wrap up our conversation with Chris Edwards of the Blue Devil Network after one more timeout here. Lockdown Blue Devils here today brought to you by our friends at Game Time. Game Time is my absolute favorite and it should be yours as well. You shouldn't have to worry when you're buying tickets to your next big event. That's because Game Time is fast and easy. It's the perfect way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater events near you. Killer last minute deals, all in prices and views from your seat and their best price guarantee. Game Time takes the guesswork out of buying tickets. Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase. They are absolutely obsessed with finding new ways to save money on tickets. Game Time has deals on tickets right up to the start of it and even an hour after it starts. It's the place to find those last minute seats. You've got the exclusive flash deal in place, sponsored deals on tickets, 
and so much more. With Zone Deals, you pick the section and Game Time picks the seats for an average of 18% savings. And the Game Time guarantee means you'll always get the best price. If somehow, some way, you're able to find tickets in the same section and row for less, Game Time will credit you 110% of the difference. They're that obsessed with making sure they've got the best offers. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Again, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On College for twenty dollars off your first purchase. Hey, use this app. Do head to the Birmingham Bowl. Find your tickets over at Game Time. Terms apply. Again, create an account. Redeem code locked on college for $20 off. Download game time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guarantee. All right, we wrap up our conversation here today with Chris Edwards of the Blue Devil Network. I'd certainly be remiss if we didn't talk a little bit about this men's basketball season so far. Fans, of course, familiar with your voice, whether they're watching Countdown to Craziness, some of those exhibition games, filling in from David Shoemate from time to time. So we got to talk about this men's sure. program, Chris if you will, a 7-3 and three start to the year for Duke. We mentioned a big game coming up with Baylor, one of the top teams in the entire country on Wednesday night in Madison Square Garden. What do you think of John Shire's team so far this year? Yeah, I think it's kind of a, a similar deal to Carol Lawson's team, right? I mean, this is still now they, they, they've got some household names, Filipowski, Mitchell, Roach, Blakes, the list kind of goes on and on, but they're still trying to figure it out, kind of meshing their way through the non-conference portion of the season. Duke's played a really competitive non-conference schedule as they – typically do you think about the the game against Arizona at Cameron man how much fun was that <laughs> to see a game like that on campus and hopefully that's a trend that continues throughout basketball no doubt uh, to have those kind of games on campus because it's just a, a it's exciting to me and I think to a lot of fans to have those kind of environments on campus um you know they went through a tough stretch there as teams typically do not going to play your best every single night so I think this is a Duke team that's still learning how to win it's a Duke team that's still putting it together and supremely confident in coach Shire and his staff to make a, a another deep run this year. Now, admittedly, I haven't seen a lot of, of coach Shire's team uh, since the preseason with countdown and then the exhibition game. So a, a little out of the loop uh, on the day to day there, since I'm so focused on what we're doing with the women's basketball program, but man, I really like that team and feel like they're going to be a team that's playing deep into the month of March and hopefully into early April. But as you said, the, the kind of big names that we're familiar with on this team, you've got Tyrese Proctor, of course, still coming back yeah. from the ankle injury. Jeremy Roach right now shooting 50% from three-point range. Just unreal how he's playing. And Kyle Filipowski uh, just putting up dominant performances, nearly has a triple-double the other night. What does it say to you about the Stoop team that it really does feel like they go as the stars go? Uh, and, and all American buzz for some of their best players. That uh, that's when they're at their best. Yeah, I mean they're they're old, right? I mean by this version of college basketball, I mean they, they don't have all these you know freshmen that, that we're maybe used to seeing across some programs, right? Yeah. They're they're old. And when's the last time you could look at a Duke team and be like, man, this team's pretty old, right? <laughs> I mean, relatively speaking, of course, in today's landscape. And, and I think that's a huge benefit for for Coach Shire and for this team because you've got all these veterans and they seem to be a really cohesive unit as well. And, and but you're going to go as your leadership goes. And there seems to be some really good leadership on this Duke men's basketball team. One final thought again, before we head out for the day, a new football coach coming mm -hmm. to campus, Manny Diaz gets the job. He's been there for about a week. We saw the press conference a week ago, trying to kind of build off what Mike Elko has done here and knowing that the bar can be as high as they want it to be in the game of college football. What would you think of the hire? Yeah, I thought it was a good hire. I mean, once again, Nina King, the uh, vice president and director of athletics, makes another phenomenal home run hire. I mean, he has done that time after time after time again. So I, I love the hire. I, I think Manny Diaz is a great fit for Duke. I love what he said in his press conference. There's something about Duke. Well, well, there is. You know, Duke is a really special place full of really special people. Uh, and in a place that I love dearly or with people that I love dearly. And he hit it right on the head. It's there's something about Duke. It is special. 
and it's a place where you can win. And, and sure, you've seen some players leave for the portal. That's in for other places. That's the nature of the beast now, right? Especially during a coaching change and all the other stuff that comes with it. But man, I, I feel really confident in what Coach Diaz and his staff is going to do at Duke. I think the fact that he was able to keep some of those folks intact, mainly on the strength and conditioning side of things, I think that's going to be huge uh, for this program moving forward. And I really like what they're building. And I feel like the Blue Devils are going to be in a lot of bowl games moving forward, JJ. I think that's certainly going to be a trend that we see continue. So, Chris, the time is always so greatly appreciated. Tell us one more time, how can we be listening to Duke women's basketball games? Let us know yep. about this Carol Lawson show, yep. the format that you got there for Just promote all the things that you've yeah. got going on for more coverage with this women's team. Yeah, I appreciate you asking. Uh, the Carol Lawson show, most every Tuesday, not quite every single Tuesday. Sure. But for the most part, you can plan on Tuesday nights. Coach Lawson and I will be at Grub in Durham from 6 to 7 to talk all things Duke women's basketball. Locally, you can listen to the show, listen to the games on 6.20 a.m., but if maybe if you're out and not in the, the Durham area, you can find us always on the Varsity Network app. That's a free download on your app, on your phone, whatever mobile device you're, you're listening on. The Varsity Network app, search for Duke. Make sure you favorite all of the Duke sports. You can listen to football, men's basketball, women's basketball, all the games, all the shows, all the baseball games. Everything is right there on the Varsity Network app, and we'd love to have you along for the coverage. Appreciate it, Chris. We'll do this again sometime soon, okay? Vijay, always good to be with you. All right, that's Chris Edwards. He's joining us here on the Blue Devil Network, and that wraps up another episode of Locked On Blue Devils here today. Thanks for your support. As always, go listen to those women's basketball games, and also make sure you subscribe to our YouTube channel here, continuing to grow this thing. That'll do it for today's show. As always, go Duke. I'll talk to you soon. My name is JJ Jackson. Thank you, and good day.